SPA is a Society for Precision Agriculture Australia, a group of like-minded people from across the nation invested in agricultural and horticultural endeavours. Lawrence de Bella farms sugarcane in Ingham and as the manager of Herbert Kane Productivity Services Limited was a joint host of the 2018 event in September. The HCPSL now has been doing uh, yield monitoring for close to 10 years and we're now using that data to actually help us develop management zones within farms. We've recently completed a big project with Rob Bramley to look at yield potentials across the district and how we can better manage uh, farming uh, enterprises and farming businesses to actually manage environmental uh, things like weather, how do we put farming systems to do that and then we're trying to look at right down to a more precise, more accurate level where we can look at our inputs being soil amendments, lime, gypsum, things like that. And the next step is actually looking at other nutrients. We're already seeing people um, already starting to use technology to actually target weeds uh, in field. And so we can reduce our input costs there by reducing the amount of chemicals we put down. It was in Townsville during the 90s when CSIRO scientist Rob Bramley studied land use impact on water quality and first encountered precision agriculture being used in the Western Australian grain sector. We tried quite hard to get precision ag going in sugar up here in the Herbert. In fact, uh, USQ had a student, Graham Cox, who produced a yield monitor and we then ran that yield monitor along with the late Ray Quabba up here in the Herbert. We did two years of yield mapping in 1998 and 1999 and then the sugar price collapsed. And so as far as the, the CSIRO precision ag effort was concerned that meant that our relatively high value crop in comparison with grains had gone and so I shifted to Adelaide to work in the wine sector so most of my early precision ag work was to do with precision viticulture and understanding vineyard variability. Drones are also being used to gather data carrying everything from sensors to cameras and even spray units however their capabilities may currently be underutilised. Agriculture has been identified by Sphere drones as one of the industries lagging behind and they find that there may be a gap between the end user, the farmer and the data that can be provided by this technology. Dennis Posebon could be considered as an early adopter of technology. Keen to improve efficiencies, he's been happy to apply new methods to a generational industry. So I was doing a lot of precision ag on my farm and this is probably where I started getting involved with um, Project Catalyst along with Position Ag because they actually work hand in hand. Uh, we're all trying to save on chemical usage, fertiliser usage and anything that can do with um, any, any type of runoff that, goes, that, goes, that will go out to the reef. We sit in, in a really environmentally sensitive area. We're sitting, sitting right next to the Great Barrier Reef. So we need to be able to manage our inputs so we don't have off-target impacts into the reef and to the natural environment. But also at the end of the day, we've got to be profitable and viable. So we've got to be able to make money. So some of these techniques will actually help us reduce our costs further and keep our industry viable into the future. I've never seen that, um, that level of uh, passion for the innovation, the sharing of ideas, the enthusiasm, not just from the growing community, uh, who are obviously trying to improve what they're doing on their own farms, but the on-ground support from the agronomists, etc., and then the support from uh, businesses who are, are helping to, to nurture their ideas forward. I've, I've just never seen that level of enthusiasm and, and the sharing of information. It's fantastic. Field days like the one here at SPA are just critical to, I think, any industry, but especially when you're looking to try and uh, disseminate information throughout an industry to share the, the the, the wins and losses, what's worked, what hasn't worked. So I think uh, you know, as an industry, they need to continue to um, be having these shed meetings, be having the field days, having the large forums like we organise through Project Catalyst. Uh, that's where growers get together, they share these ideas, they find out what's working in other regions, they, they have an ability to then make decisions on what they're gonna do in their future operations. Since 2009, Sugarcane has provided Wal Giordani and his family an opportunity to develop a business and exposed him to innovation. It's, I could see there were people around me, other growers. Um, it's a very innovative area down the Bamboo line, Ingham line area. 
um, were involved with Catalyst and, and they were just giving glowing reports and there was a lot of things that I were doing that weren't being recognised I suppose. Um, although I was doing them in conjunction with HCPSL so you know I was always asking for agronomical advice and those sorts of things. Um, yeah, it became a, a natural progression, I suppose, to, to move into Catalyst and just see what other people are doing out there and, and obviously getting some of the feedback that what I was doing was probably some cutting edge stuff. PA is an important step for any farmer, been young or old. Um, it's just not about going in straight lines using your GPS. There's more to it. Um, there's the benefit of saving on chemicals, saving on fertiliser, ensuring that you do apply your right uh, chemicals and the right fertiliser in the right spots. I gave the example earlier of variable rate gypsum in the burdekin. Now we know that, that in that particular example where the grower was putting six tonnes per hectare in the areas that really needed it, rather than three and a half tonnes per hectare everywhere was saving him $330 a hectare. Now that's before you even factor in the benefit of the yield response by treating the sodicity. So the benefit would be more than that. Um, farmers aren't stupid, they're running a business and they wouldn't be doing this stuff if they didn't think it was worthwhile.